we spent the whole weekend together. We came back to Austin. And, you know, we actually got to really get to know each other um, in person. Because it's definitely, you, you know, you might not vibe with a person in person mm-hmm. like you do over the phone. Yep. And I was worried about it, but actually, like, he was who he was over the phone in person. And it was an amazing weekend. And it just made us fall in love that much more. And I'm glad we did it. And I'm glad I stayed in for the long haul and didn't get deterred by the pop off The Bible study, we had the uh, being mentally stimulated. And we also had, uh, she was, she was fun. And then, the, and, and the funny thing about it was, <laughs> it, we, we were, we were cool because the conversations that we had, we could talk about everything, everything just, it wasn't just about the Bible, you know, and, and that was our centerpiece, but we talked about everything i mean we laughed and there was stuff that we agreed on disagreed on but uh, we had differences like but it was all good and i was looking forward to talking to her again and the communication piece was important because what's up brave hearts community this is sean heineman your premier pre-engagement coach back with another segment of it's scary to marry wanting you to love fearlessly finally in the house I have Mrs. Heineman. You guys have been asking. So I finally got her on. Finally. Okay. So enjoy this while you can. <laughs> and we're going to talk about today about our experience and, and how we met and maybe just some tips to help some people who are single. Maybe you've been divorced. You know, I'm all about that life and helping people to love fearlessly, of course, as uh, my tagline say. So we're just going to discuss our story and just to know that at the end of the day, you still going to get everything that you need out of this, this segment. Okay. And that's why I brought my wife on here from a woman's perspective and from my perspective as well. And uh, we just going to rock this thing out. So how you doing, Miss Heineman? I'm doing well, Mr. Heineman. How are you doing? <laughs> I am great. Yeah. So Going back to 2017, I remember going through my divorce and, and I talked about some of this stuff before. But just having her perspective is really going to help out a lot, especially for my single ladies. That's going to help them. Uh, so I'm going through through this divorce process in 2017, and uh, I'm I'm on my own, and I'm, you know I'm living in a in a, in a different place, and she's living on her own, and we're just trying to get these divorce papers signed. So before I even met her, I was going through this whole process, right? And it was one of those things that really bothered me because I knew that I needed to get this done in order for me to move on with my life uh, because we were already separated for some time. But meeting her on Instagram one day, I was scrolling and I seen a picture because we were already connected. We were already on Instagram because we had like similar people. I think we was connected to a life coach or something like that. No, no names, but yeah. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we were, and I seen a picture and I seen another picture and I looked again and I seen another picture and I was like, well, let me just keep scrolling. Let me, I'm just going to stay stuck on her page for a minute. And, uh, I just kept liking her pictures. I liked a lot of pictures. Yeah. I liked a lot of pictures. And then I, and then I, I slid in a DM or I think you liked the picture back. I liked, yeah. A lot of your pictures back. Yeah. You liked a lot of my, so we was playing the whole tag back and forth. <laughs> I like your pictures. You like mine's kind of thing. Yeah. And then, and that's when I, I, I slid in the DM. That's when I, 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 sh- I took my shot. You, you, you shot your shot. I, sh- I shot, I took, I shoot, I shoot my shoot shot. My shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and that's how it started. And the rest is history. I'm not, no, it's not over yet. But, um, and that's how we, we met. And, I, and I'll post our screenshot because we still have it. And uh, I remember just talking to her and just, hey, thanks for the likes. And I actually liked her from my old podcast show. I didn't like her from my my own personal account. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. she thought I was trying to get her to listen to to my podcast. Yes, I did. (laughs) So I was like, I just played this move. Like, okay. But she, I I talked about, because she asked me, she said, how long you been podcasting? And I said, since 2013. So Mm -hmm. for all of you thinking that I'm new to this game. I've been in this podcasting game for a long, long time. When people were calling me 
and saying, what is a podcast? That's how long I've been podcasting. So I'm your favorite podcasters podcaster. <laughs> I have birthed so many podcasters. But anyway, this isn't all about me. I'm just, you know, I guess put, giving a little bit of getting my boast on just a little bit. But yeah, and she was like, so how long you been podcasting? Yeah, it's 2013. So we're doing a bunch of small talk and we're talking about where we live and all these different things. And that's when you gave me your number. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Because mm -hmm. you was like, I don't want to, I think you said, I don't want to, uh, I don't like going back and forth on yeah, text. Yeah, because it was a lot. I'm not a big texter. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people from our generation and younger like to text, but I, I like the old school where you talk on the phone, you know, cupcake a little, like super Betty Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we and we and we jumped on, and I think I called you immediately. I, I think we yeah, talked yeah, right. We, we talked for a few hours too. Yeah, and we did the old school Skype thing. Like, mm -hmm. so shout out to Skype. Actually, I tweeted about that one day about how we met on Skype, and Skype tweeted me back and was like, "Oh, great memories." Mm -hmm. Like Skype straight up hit me up. I was like, wow, they pay attention to social media. Yeah. So from then we started talking and uh, I, I, I think that day we talked for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. I think we got on and we just start rapping just talking about a whole bunch of different things. And uh, she was, I guess her way of flirting with me was saying that she was going to listen to my podcast. Yeah, ladies, I... <laughs> was the woman who struggled with flirting. Like, I did not know when a man was flirting with me and I did not know how to flirt very well. I had my son back in 2014. So after that, trying to get back out there and like really date and start dating intentionally and stuff like that it was very difficult for me. So I didn't know when somebody was flirting. So I remember praying to God one day, I was like, God, I need to learn how to flirt. So when he slid in the DMs, as you would say, I was like, oh, I'm going to practice flirting. And I guess it worked because I have him now. Yeah, here we are five years later. I know, so and yeah. actually, this is what, Labor Day weekend? Is this Labor Day or Memorial Day? What is What weekend is this? It's Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Day. Actually, this marks five years. Mm -hmm. Since we actually met in person. Since we actually met, the first time we actually met in person. In person, yeah. Yeah, because people ask about that. People ask who who got flewed out? Yeah. <laughs> People ask that. Who did? Who 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 flewed out first? Yeah. Uh, they ask that question, mm -hmm. and and I always tell people that I flew out to see her first mm -hmm. because I just thought that was creepy as a man, like flying a woman out to come see you if you just met somebody. I just think you that's, think it's creepy. I think that's kind of creepy. If I'm if I'm meeting you and as a man, I'm coming to see you first. Because just for the sake of argument, right? So, and we just kicking it. For the sake of argument, say we talking and as a woman, you come and see me, you don't have any connections. You might not have any connections in that state if you're getting flued out. That's true. So you have to depend on the man. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. And I've heard too many creeper stories. Yeah, I have friends who had them. I've never personally been flued out. 
but I have heard some horror stories, so I get it. Yeah, I got a, a lot of social media stuff. Um, you see them online with people, horror stories, right? Mm-hmm. So I flew out to go see her, uh, and that was, yeah, so that marks five years. So we'll be married in, married in five years in October. Um, yeah, so I went to fly out to go see her. But before I saw her, I was actually, we talked on Skype every day. And people ask about how important is communication and how did you know she was the one and all this other stuff. So, how did you know I was the one? How did I know? How did you know? I just know. <laughs> you don't know, now you know, nigga. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, but I think for me, well, no, I know. Because we got married in, in six months. And I think the thing was, for one, prayer, right? And not to sound too churchy. And I'm sure you had a similar feeling about praying and, and God, if this ain't the one, you know, that whole prayer. I think that's that's important too. you know, move my the way, you know, that whole thing. Um, but it still takes, sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes more than that. Sometimes I think you still have to use some discernment when it comes to knowing that somebody is the right one or not. Uh, and and shameless plug. That's why I created the 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 online course, right? I created the Shameless. online course, uh, dating intentionally five ways to know if they are the one. Because really good. I ran her, yeah, I ran her through the ringer. He um, so these are I didn't some. Know he was doing it, but he did. <laughs> yeah, I did it because I was like, I have to be intentional, right? So I think a lot of times if we're out here now, if you're dating just to be dating, that's one thing. If you're dating to to marry then you really have to be intentional on whoever isn't a part of your space or whoever isn't going to conform to your standards. It's okay to let that person go. So I ran her through the ringer. So um, we talked about this off camera as well, but I I asked her about, about having Bible study, right? These are small things that I was looking at. Like, let me see if she fit the bill. I need somebody that loves God more than me, right? As far as love God more than me, like love me, you know, knowing that God comes first, then comes your spouse, right? right? I think that's very important. And then uh, reading books. I like to be mentally stimulated. I, that's, that's huge for me. I like, I like reading books. I like learning. Um, Sometimes we'll be laying up in the bed and I'm like, you want to watch this YouTube video? You want to watch this? (laughs) And I was like, I I must be corny. No, I enjoy the fact that we have a lot of mentally stimulating conversations. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that really drew me to you, Mm -hmm. Um, especially when we first got together. I didn't think you lived all the way in Arizona, so Mm -hmm. I didn't think this man was going to be a part of my life. I was like, oh, maybe God is just sending me a friend to give me some attention. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And you were amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah amazing what's the word I'm looking for I was stimulating yes, ment- man, mentally mentally stimulating mentally stimulating <laughs> and I felt like I was getting my mind was being fed mm-hmm. what it needed at that time and I and I liked it and I really enjoyed our conversations that we had and the time you know we talked about everything from politics to religion because you know those are sometimes taboos when right, you're first yeah. meeting someone you're like don't talk about politics and religion but we talked about all those yeah. things you're a trumper I can't talk to you anymore yeah like and and <laughs> I'm glad we were able to have those discussions and be open and candid about things. And then also you didn't, um, you didn't make me feel bad for how I thought about anything. And I really mm-hmm. appreciated that about you. Like mm-hmm. my thoughts were my thoughts. And you might not have necessarily agreed, but you let yeah. me have my own thoughts. And mm-hmm. I think that's something when you're finding a partner for me, mm-hmm. everybody's different, but for me, I think it's important to have somebody who can truly listen to what you have to say mm-hmm. and be accepting of it, not necessarily have to agree with it, right. but accept it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's important just to have somebody that's a- a- agreeable, right? Like we don't have to, everything don't have to be the way I see it, but it's like, you know what? That's cool. Because mm-hmm. you'll get people online on, on social media. If they disagree with you, they unfollowing you or they blocking you because they did. And it's like. Everybody has opinions. Yeah, everybody. And everybody's experience is different. Yeah, exactly. Uh, her her experience is totally different than mine's. Mm-hmm. Um, f- from dating to, mm-hmm. to the way we were raised, all these different things. Yeah. But I still respect her opinion. And I think that comes, some of that comes from me just being older and just kind of being around the block before, like <laughs> trying to control people. 
I, I had to learn that. Mm-hmm. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. And and accept people's opinion for who they are. So uh, I think that was something that helped as well. So we had the the Bible study. We had the being mentally stimulated, and we also had uh, she was she was fun. And then the and and a funny thing about it was. <laughs> <laughs> it, we we were we were cool because the conversations that we had we could talk about everything everything just it wasn't just about the bible you know and, and that was our centerpiece but we talked about everything i mean we laughed and there was stuff that we agreed on disagreed on but uh we had differences like but it was all good and i was looking forward to talking to her again and the communication piece was important because you would be going to work. I would be at work and I would be, uh, I'm about to go take my break in 15 minutes, you yeah. know, and you, oh, well, I'm on my way here. And, and so we would always find little ways, little pockets throughout the course of a day and, and trying to make sure that we, we talk with each other. Mm-hmm. So that's how, and I tell guys, I tell women is a lot of times, like if he wants to be with you, he will make time. We were in two different States, you know, so Mm-hmm. we made sure that we made time. And then when we got off work and we were home and, sh- and she was a single parent, I was trying to get custody of my daughter. We still had time for each other. We yeah. still was on Skype for about an hour after we got off work. Yeah, we made a lot of time for each other. And I think also I almost had a security blanket because I know a lot of women um, ask, how is it having a long distance relationship? Mm-hmm. It is difficult but I think one thing that really helped us is that we did talk all the time so there was never a question and then I knew your every move you knew mine you gave me that security blanket knowing Mm -hmm. that not that I'm like following you or watching everything little thing you do but I was comfortable in knowing that you know you were committed to me Mm -hmm. at the time Mm -hmm. and that I never questioned him being faithful or anything like that Mm -hmm. and because we did we talked all the time and not saying ladies that you know somebody can't be doing stuff behind your back even though you talk to them all the time people have their ways okay yeah but we I had enough security in knowing that you know he was where he said he was going to be and we talked all the time so I never questioned you yeah. know his faithfulness to me even though he was states away because the whole first year of our marriage he was in a whole or not marriage but yeah. in our relationship he was in a whole nother state so yeah um and maybe that was about five, a year huh yeah, about, about a year five months after we got married he was still yeah. in another state because yeah. he didn't move to texas until february so yeah it was deaf it was a hard 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 time because you know you miss your partner you want to be next to them mm-hmm. um but I think because he gave me my security blanket, letting me know where he is and that he was okay and vice versa, like we knew each other's moves. And I wanted to talk to him all the time. Like I was excited to talk to him. I got the little butterflies every time we got to talk, you know what I'm saying? So um, I think that helped yeah. our relationship a lot, being long distance. Yeah. You give me butterflies. But it was one of those things where I, I felt that I always wanted to talk to her. And that's the thing. That's the that's the mental stimulation piece. Mm-hmm. Always wanting to talk to this person because I'm pretty sure you can talk to somebody and they can be just dull, <laughs> you know. And after you get the initial, what is your favorite color? You know, what was your past relationship? Like, once you get past that, it's like, what do you yeah, have to talk about? about? Yeah. I think us reading books help too, because they give us a whole nother piece of things to talk about. Well, you know, of course you have the things on Instagram. So you're saying, Oh, let's read this article and stuff like that. We did that a lot or on Facebook, but I think. Sending memes to each other. Yeah. All day. We're always sending memes to each other. We'll be cracking up. But uh, I think us reading books together really helped because, um, and I learned this from a guy at work. He was telling me him and his significant other were reading a book together. And he said, get books where they're talking about, real topics you know so that way you can find out what your partner's stance is on different topics and if you you know some people you hear something that they you know agree with because like say you know you agree with gun laws and your partner doesn't that might be a real point of contention because your partner might want a gun in their home later on in life and you were like I have children here I don't want guns in my house so I think reading different books with different topics because you're not going to think of everything of course when you read a book it gives you an opportunity to talk about those different topics and really get your person your partner's um real and raw feelings about Mm -hmm. it so that you know make make sure that you guys mesh well together so I think reading books is 
a really good thing to do with a person. And then also, as Sean would say, it shows how committed you are to something. If y'all could finish a whole book together, if he can read a whole book with you, he's probably going to be committed to you, you know, because he can actually commit to something because reading a book, a big book with a person and talking about it every day and going over it or even having Bible study with somebody, you know, even just once a week, that's a commitment. And it's like, if you all can commit to do those things, it's, it's important. And that will show if this person is actually a committed person and they're right for you. Mm, yeah. Personal experience, that's not for everybody. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, right. And that's, yeah, because I, I did a video about, is he going to be a deadbeat dad? Like, how will I know if he's a deadbeat dad? And in the video, I talked about that. I'm like, what was the last thing he completed? Mm. Mm. You know, yes. and, and I talked about in the book, I was like, he was talking about he was reading The Secret, you know, the book, The Secret. I've been reading The Secret and he ain't finished it. He didn't read. You've been reading this book for 10 years. They ain't finished reading it yet. <laughs> you know, that's that's a sign right there. Let you know that, you know, the secret is he ain't going to be a good daddy. He's, that's the secret. <laughs> he ain't finished reading the book. He ain't committed to anything. But you could check that video out. That's that's another topic. But anyway, uh, moving forward, I got to see you for the first time. Flew out to Texas. Yes. That weekend. You did. You met me in Houston. In Houston. H-Town going down. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, right? We we met that weekend, and she lived up to the hype. Like, she was everything. But you know how you can meet somebody online, and they actually, they <laughs> you meet them, and they like, uh, when you meet them, they're not the person who they were online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be getting catfished out here in these streets. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things where she was actually everything that I was looking for, and she lived up to the hype. And I was just like, wow. So I couldn't get enough. I was like, man, she she is the truth. Funny story. We both didn't have that same experience. Oh yeah, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. So she wasn't. Why weren't you so? <laughs> well, for the people, quick tea time. When I first met Sean, when we talked over Skype, of course, he always had on regular regular clothes, you know, you know, little shorts, you know, t-shirt workout clothes, you know. But when I met him in person, daddy came in with the cat daddy outfit on like. <laughs> He had all these extra starch jeans <laughs> with the crisp line in the middle. And, we, you know, I'm in the younger generation. We don't do that. So, and then. It's a 12 year age gap between is, us. Yeah, I, I, age. I was 40. She was 28 at the time. Mm-hmm. So she, I was robbing the cradle, I guess. But anyway, go ahead. He did. Um, and, you know, had on his bedazzled t- button down. And what's that? What's that? Fedora's hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was just like, and in the papa shoes, I found papa shoes, the little church shoes, the really. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, woo! <laughs> Never saw you dressed like this. And he, I know he thought he was fly. I know he was like, yeah. You know, I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. um, but oddly enough, like at first, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of like, oh, what did I get myself into? with this older man who looks like an older man at this current moment because he never Sean was a very handsome man you know he does not look his age at all um but he did that day and I was just like (laughs) what is going on what is going on but uh it was funny because after actually because I was I'm not gonna lie I was sitting here trying to plot how I could leave not gonna lie but after us actually spending some time together eating dinner and hanging out and just getting to see his beautiful mind in person I was just like I was sold you know clothes are clothes you know Off things can be changed it depends no anyway go ahead <laughs> clothes are clothes <laughs> clothes are clothes. Uh, clothes cut it open. out okay. <laughs> Much. Um, but yeah, and, it. Him. It. Go ahead. and so I, I'm glad that I, you know, in my head I made a rush decision. I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do this. This is this is not what I thought. But after us actually spending time together and we spent the whole weekend together, we came back to Austin, weekend. and you know, we actually got to 
really get to know each other um in person because it's definitely you, you know you might not vibe with a person in person mm-hmm. like you do over the phone yep. and i was worried about it but actually like he was who he was over the phone in person and it was an amazing weekend and mm. it just made us fall in love that much more it was, and yeah. i'm glad we did it and i'm glad i stayed in for the long haul mm. and didn't get deterred by the pop <laughs> and um and as y'all can see he doesn't dress like a pop-up anymore well i always talk about it on social media how i have my stylist uh-huh. i always talk about that yes. right yeah so did you feel like i was changing you during that whole process? I did because there's one small part that you left out with the clothes. Mm-hmm. Because she revamped the whole the whole wardrobe. She was like, look, if you and she, she told me, she's like, look, we can't be hanging out if you're gonna be dressing like this. She was like, no. What's happening? So she she revamped the whole wardrobe. And I think I might have posted a picture on Twitter of my 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 uh, closet <laughs> before relocating because I got rid of all my old clothes. Because she was like, "Look, that's no, don't don't bring none of that stuff out here. We're gonna start fresh." I at first I thought you was trying to change me, mm-hmm. but I was at a place in my life where I was willing to change, and I think that's the important thing. Like. Had you met me a couple years earlier, it probably wouldn't work, you know. So I do believe God's timing is perfect. Yeah. And are you willing to change? So I think for for most people, if you're willing to make the change, I think it could be a beautiful thing. Because I looked at it as well. Obviously, these results didn't get me this far. They didn't yeah. get me anywhere. So. Yeah. So we got to a place where we, once I left that, that weekend, yeah. uh, we had to find some time to coordinate our schedules. Yeah. We had to coordinate our schedules and make it work. So uh, knowing that this was a long distance relationship, that we were catching flights. Catching flights. We were catching crazy flights. Yes. Um, Shout out to southwest southwest yeah if you see this yeah <laughs> shout out to southwest if you they they're not paying deal. us for this yeah but if y'all want to give us a story a sponsorship deal <laughs> you know what i'm saying like we and you can use lot. our story <laughs> you know what i'm saying catch your y'all, service, catch y'all had some deals and little discounts on tickets for every now and then y'all were helping our relationships yeah. for us to get to see each other <laughs> we was racking up them points yeah. we, were, we were yeah we were, those rapper rewards Rapid rewards for working. You was getting tickets, eighty dollars. Man, we were getting love. Yeah, we were finding deals. But anyway, um, yeah. So we we got to a place where we was coordinating again communication. We're gonna catch this flight here. This is when we can connect again. Boom. This is and then there was one time where we we went a span of maybe uh, like six seven. weeks, six seven weeks where we didn't even see each other. That was a really hard time yeah and that was tough I was just like man that's that's a long time Mm -hmm. uh but I remember going out to Texas I think the next time I think the the next time I visited you I got to meet the family I think yeah you met my siblings yeah in Vegas oh we no yeah we that was no that's going back yeah we met in Vegas we did for July 4th weekend for for July weekend Memorial Day first and then July 4th weekend we met up that's true. I met and your Vegas. brother and your sister. He did. That is so true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The Vegas trip. Uh huh. We had fun in the Vegas trip. Fun. We turned up in Vegas. Uh, I drove. Quick story. I drove from Arizona mm-hmm. to Vegas. I left work that day. Got off work. Drove all the way down to Vegas. I think I stayed, did I even stay a night? Or I, stayed a night. I stayed a night and then yeah. I came, so drove all the way back to go to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it was it was crazy like that. Like we was kicking it. So again, these these storylines, I'm saying all these things. If he will make, if he want to make time for you, he will. If I'm willing to drive a different state and go back to work the next, you know, the uh, uh, following day after, I mean, come on. He lived down the street from you and he won't even call you. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, y'all know me. Y'all know how I rock. Yeah. So, uh, we was catching flights and what happened after that? We, we had a lot of stuff going on. I think that, I think after that was almost about three months in. And I think around three months, that's when I proposed. 
in August you proposed. Yeah. Now people will ask, how did you know she was the one? Again, I was running her through the ringer. These were some small things that I needed to know. And I'm sure she had her list too. I'm pretty sure she had a checklist of things that she required. Because here it is. I'm going through a whole freaking divorce. You know what I'm saying? So I know she's like, but it was it was uh, the mental stimulation. It was a personal relationship with God. She was fun. And when I say fun, I'm talking about just having fun in different facets of life. Like we could just do different. We could just go to painting with a twist. Uh, we just doing all kind of different stuff together, different experiences for me that I, that I haven't had before. And I think this and our whole thing with our mission statement is love God, serve, me, uh, lo- love, love God, <laughs> serve God, love family, create dope memories. Yep. That's the thing you want to create dope memories. Yes. And that's what we were doing throughout this time. Uh, so I remember one day I went to the mall. We talked that morning and I went to the mall and I told myself, if I find this ring that I think she's going to like, I know this is it. I already know I wanted to marry her. But on top of that, I just I was like, it's in the cards. If I go to the mall today and and this is going to be the day I know this is and sure enough, went to two different jewelry stores. And when I seen the ring, I was like, yep, that's it. This okay this is this is the way it's going down this is the way it's supposed to be oh and let me say this too i think what helped us a lot was we both wanted to marry we did i think that's important because a lot of people get into relationships and one person want to get married but not the other person and you never had a discussion on a court about that for sure Mm. marriage and possibly kids too y'all should both be on the same page about kids because that was another conversation that's a whole oh shoot i forgot about that because sean didn't want more children i was 40 with a 14 year old daughter you were what 28 with a Mm three-year-old i was like i'm done Mm -hmm. i'm like why why have any more kids i'm done i I'm, i'm four years away I'm four years away from from freedom. And of course, the kids never leave you, you know, but I was four years away. Four years, (laughs) y'all. It's so sad. God knows best. God knows what he wants. And honestly, what I recommend to women, you know, if a man is very stern or, or, you know, a man and to the fellas too, if a woman is saying she doesn't want more children or a man is saying he doesn't want more children, can you compromise? Of course. But if somebody's really like, I don't want this and you force them to do something that they don't want, I feel like that can grow resentment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's definitely important to be on the same page about kids and marriage like y'all both want to be married and y'all both want children if you know y'all are both not on that same page it can cause resentment later on the relationship and then also you could be wasting your time you know because you could be with somebody who actually wants the same things that you want Mm -hmm. um funny though because sean did not want more children and he had two two within three years within three years he he kept (laughs) <laughs> giving me kids to make okay so um god knows best god knew what I, you know i would throw in little plugs because i knew he didn't want any more children and I, I came to accept it i was like oh okay well it's fine i have a child he has a child they have siblings they're, you know they're gonna be each other's siblings i was like and i come from a big family my child will be okay um so i kind of tried to like be okay with it but I knew in my heart of hearts that I was supposed to have more kids and I knew that I wanted my son to have siblings and I, I just knew that was something I really desired so I would just tell him little things like we would make really pretty babies you know <laughs> and he was like you know what would and I was like you know you can have a son and you know carry on the hiding the last night you know and yeah. i think that's probably what sold him that was a sales pitch yeah, yeah. I, I, I was i was selling it hard ladies i was like yeah give him more kids carry on your legacy <laughs> yeah i forgot about that one i was like mm-hmm. yeah and lo and behold we had two boys yep. so he's I had definitely two boys gonna be- <laughs> Yeah, right. Two we carry together. on that Heineman legacy. <laughs> yeah, and that's, I'm glad you talked about that though about kids. Mm-hmm. I think that's I'm glad you talked about that mm-hmm. because that's because a lot of times people are they already have kids and they might not want anymore. You already got Especially the Brady bunch. Families, yeah, yeah, right. And blended families is another topic within itself. Yes. Raising somebody else's kid, yeah, you know. Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know too many people that's young and they're like, "Hey, I want to marry somebody and raise somebody else's kid." 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of us grew up like that. I didn't. I don't know. Yeah. But that was a, a conversation that we had, and we talked about that, uh, and we had kids. But anyway, I, I going back to the story. I got the ring. I know this sounds cheesy, but I proposed to her over Skype because I wasn't gonna see her. You saw another. that picture of me, like I was. It that was picture sad. is hilarious. I think we should that I, if it's worth sharing. I think we should share that. That that was a funny picture. You got it somewhere around here. But I remember talking to her over Skype. She was asleep, knocked out, and I talked to her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I was talking, and I was like, "Yeah, this and this," and I, you know, I had my little sales pitch. I don't know what I said. A whole bunch of random stuff, and I was looking at him like, "What are we talking about?" Yeah. Okay, yeah. telling me how much he loves and cares about me, or something mm-hmm. like, "Okay, I know what are you doing." <laughs> yeah, right. And then, uh, and that's when I proposed to her. I put the ring in front of the camera on Skype. <laughs> Y'all don't look at my nails though, because they're not that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh she had the 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 crying emoji it face that it was snot nose i was just yeah. surprised but then i was angry because he did it over skype and so if i went and told everybody i was engaged the first thing they're gonna do is look at your finger yeah. like where's the ring and i'm like but i i don't have one yeah. you know so of course no one's gonna believe me <laughs> and we had a lot of naysayers we had a lot we had a lot of them friends and family a lot of them uh, and of course and and logically i understand here it is you coming up out of a divorce you ready to jump right into a marriage uh you marrying somebody older than you 12 year age gap this guy that you met on instagram right <laughs> i mean go figure and then mm-hmm. just different factors just all these different things y'all don't really know each other you're far away, you're far away. All these different things, but I knew, I knew that she was the one for me. Because people always say, "How did you know?" Because, and I say this until Jesus come back. She had eighty percent of everything I was looking for in a woman. Nobody is perfect, right? Everybody has issues. Yeah. Some people got sandwich bag size issues. Some people got trash bag issues. It just depends on what you want willing to roll with. Mm-hmm. And th- that that eighty percent. I wasn't willing to sacrifice you to try to find 90 because that's where a lot of people go wrong. They're like, well, I really like her, but I'm going to try to hold her, keep her on the side and see if I can get somebody else who might have 90. And you may not find that 90. Yeah. And then you lose the 80 trying to find a 90. Now now you don't have nobody. Yeah. Now you're all alone, you know, trying to be greedy. Mm. um so that's so yeah so that was being greedy will get you nowhere greed is greed is a terrible thing so that was so i was like i'm i'm good i don't need to i don't need to swipe right or swipe left i'm 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 good and actually i didn't even use no dating apps actually because we met on instagram (laughs) so i didn't you know i wasn't on bumble and tinder and all them them things you had no idea about bof never had any i I didn't know what plenty of fish was she'd be talking about plenty of fish i'm like what is that He's very green. <laughs> very green. I agree. Yeah. But I mean, once upon a time in my life, I was single, contrary to popular belief. Even though I spent half of my life like married, I spent half of my life, you know. So when I'm giving you this stuff, I'm giving you some, some real game. Um, and then we got married, or we went to Arizona to marry because yes. you came out to visit. Mm-hmm. And we we did um set up uh like we had an actual wedding in a church but mm-hmm. it was just us it was me you the photographer shout out shout out to od yes if you watching this od in the building shout out taking our amazing pictures that went viral yeah. that's a whole nother story oh we'll my god yeah the viral pictures we're not gonna talk about it right now no viral pictures oh yeah we'll talk about it later yeah it went viral in 2017 that's crazy <laughs> shout out to od yeah yeah big man big man things and then um we had our pastor. Oh, shout out uh, to past, the shout out to Pastor Bland, my yes. mentor, uh, who actually helped get me started in whole podcasting. He was the first man that actually let me rock with his studio, and uh, and that's a whole different story because that was the old podcast. But shout out to him as well. Yes, and, and I remember him telling me. He said, "Sean, he said if you picked her, then I know you good because I know you don't mess with anybody." Now this is me. This is just my life experience. I ain't gonna say this is my truth. This is my story. This is just story. this is my story. True story. But when you and, and 
all glory to God, right? But when people know your track record and, and the way you move, for him to tell me that, that, oh, if you chose her, she's got to be special. Because he knew I wasn't out here running the streets like that. He knew if I was going to be with somebody, I was going to be committed, that whole thing. So he was like, no, nah. it's like, man, I trust you. And he's saying this as a pastor. And I was like, man, that meant the world to me. So shout out to, to Pastor Bland. So, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful mm-hmm. ceremony with just he and I, which I'm not a big person who's big on flashy things or anything. And I remember telling him when we said we were going to get married, he was like, so you want a big wedding? I was like, no. And he was confused. <laughs> I remember that. You're like, I don't want a big wedding. Yeah, I, I wanted want it no to just wedding. be us. Yeah. Um, I think, it, you know, Anybody who wants a big wedding, good, for, you know, that's for you. Yeah, that's and people for you. who want a small wedding, that's okay too. Like, because you do want people who are at your wedding that are in agreement, you know, with your decisions and, you know, who are going to help bless your union. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's important to have people around you who are going to continue to bless your union and, you know, they're going to be rooting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because people look, go to your wedding and then talk about you after they leave, after they ate your food and then even give you a gift. Yeah. And they'll be talking about you. Yeah. And I, I mean, I wish hindsight's 2020 getting ready by myself. Awful. Um, I, that was a horrible experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to call Spade. I was like, grandma, my grandmother, she was a speech seamstress. I was like, I need you to give me some power to help me get this dress up in the back. <laughs> I was telling Jesus, come on, I need you to get me get this stuff. <laughs> Cause I did not know how I was going to zip up that dress by myself. And there was nothing but men there. <laughs> so I struggled, yeah. but you know, you did it. God is good. Okay. And he got me through it. Okay. Yeah, and did. I was able to <laughs> zip up my dress and get dressed somehow. And, um, I was able to, you know, be good. And <sighs> yeah, she put it off. She did it. it got was, dressed by herself at her wedding. Yeah, How many of y'all can say that? Yes, it was it was yeah. it was a lot. It yeah. was a lot. And then um we ended up going to Vegas afterwards we for our Vegas. honeymoon. And that Drove was nice. Vegas. Yeah, we just you know driving our you know road trip together. Road trip. Yeah, yeah, it was nice yeah. and just enjoyed each other's company. And it was just easier not having a bunch of people and having to be like, okay, That's guys, true. we're yeah. sneaking we're off about to go. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we have to explain it. nothing. We could just leave and yeah. do everything on our own terms, and didn't have to feed a whole bunch of people at the yeah, reception. That's right. You know, uh, but it would have been nice to have. I'm not gonna lie. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It would have been nice to at least have my mother or somebody there, or even you know some of my siblings there to help me get dressed for <laughs> sure. And then you know just have family come and help, you know help be in agreement with everything that we had. But it was just cheaper. I wanted yeah, a house. Was. I wanted to. There were so many things I wanted to do, and I was like, we didn't. I didn't, I didn't have the money for a big old wedding, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to spend all that money. Um, but if you have the money, girl, you know, do what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Shout I would rather have you. bought some property. You know. Yeah. So. Um. But after that, we went to Vegas. Had a Vegas. good time. Out in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. That was our second time in Vegas, like within three, four months. Too. Yeah, yeah. We like Vegas. Yeah, right. Yeah. Spent a lot of money there. Yeah. But that was, yeah, and that was that was a heck of an experience. We did a whole bunch of stuff, had fun, kicked it, and we still married. We still were separated, separated because I had to go back home and she had to go back home. So we still had to finish this process within a, uh, maybe like another five months and stuff yeah, like that. Yes. You didn't move to Texas. And that was a tough decision trying to figure out who was going to move yeah, where. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's another one time, too. That's another, yeah. yeah. You know, he didn't end up getting custody of our daughter. Mm-hmm. And so um, it just made more sense for him to move to Texas. Um, didn't get time. custody at the time. At the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she a year or two later, she ended up living with us. Mm-hmm. And um, he had all his babies in one house. Um, but uh living apart and being married Mm -hmm. very difficult um that was another big transition that we had that was a tough transition for us and Mm -hmm. it was a struggle but god's grace we got through it god is so good Mm -hmm. he got us through all of that (laughs) yeah right yeah i have to give him the glory and all of that (laughs) yeah we got through that and uh eventually i ended up 
moving to Texas. So, yeah. And I think the biggest thing was because some people struggle with that, too. Well, who's going to move where? Mm -hmm. And for our situation, it was that her family was here in Texas. I couldn't see her moving to Arizona and being away from her family when I just it was just me there Mm -hmm. and trying to get custody of my daughter and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? It's better that I just move there and then I'll, I'll adjust accordingly. Yeah. You know, so, and and that's how it worked. So everything, everything worked out uh, for our good. Eventually I I like it here. So it took me a little while to get used to, but yeah. And I never understood. I had a coworker. He used to to talk. He's always like already. And I was like, (laughs) what is already like, are you already done? Oh, Are we already man. done with work? Is that what you're saying already? I didn't get it. No. And I came home, remember, I came home from work one day. I asked her, I was like, what does already mean? <laughs> I was like, wow, that's, this is, okay, this is my baptism into Texas. But anyway. Texas is amazing. Yeah, right. So. Texas all day. Yeah. And then we had, we, we uh, I, I ended up relocating, ended up coming here. February. February. 2018. Uh, 2018. And then. You, you got pregnant a couple months later, a couple weeks later, something like that. I think. I think I got pregnant that same night. <laughs> that same night. Yeah, it didn't take that long. It huh? didn't take. Yeah. I had we had baby Caleb in October. October. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. you want to tell the tell well yeah I guess it's a two part story I guess of how uh, you show love with the first pregnancy but then the second one you like just threw the pregnancy stick out <laughs> she just took the pregnancy i'm pregnant again <laughs> it was bad it was a lot because i just had a baby yeah yeah you was just having babies so with, yeah yeah, yeah. Was... so with caleb you know i made sure i wrote him a nice note and told him this you know made a big announcement how he's gonna be a new dad and it was so exciting we'll have to show you the video i have it somewhere oh yeah that's true. yeah yeah that's true. i have to show you the video that's and then funny. with joshua Caleb might have been six months old at the time so when I realized I was pregnant I was just I was upset I was upset I did not want to be pregnant I just just started losing the baby weight (laughs) like I was just getting off postpartum I was dealing with that Um, postpartum depression is real shout out to the mommies out there who deal with it if you are dealing with it get some help get counseling you know you need a pill to help you get through it i understand mama it is tough out here you have to do what you have to do to feel better you know well it's part of it's real and, and i think people don't talk about it enough they do not. Uh, even from and i think you can't even get to that place if you just kind of got baby mama baby daddy kind of thing because you're all trying to figure out what we're going to do with this baby let alone postpartum if he ain't in the picture mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so that's i it's so much stuff that goes into that because mm-hmm. uh, as a man you might not understand you just like she tripping mm-hmm. but you don't know what she's going through you have no idea i think we had our struggles too. we had our struggles yeah, with that too heck yeah you know, so i didn't understand what i was going through mm-hmm. you know you hadn't dealt with that before in 15 some years you know a long time i, I yeah. had yeah that was, was different that was a lot and you know thank god for counseling yep. you know um i found an amazing counselor and she was able to help me through a lot of that process mm-hmm. um, at the time because it, it was a struggle. It was a real big struggle. Um, I, you know, I still battle with depression even to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes and goes. And so having the proper help that you need, you know, you get it if you need it. Mm-hmm. Because being out here and just feeling down all the time and in the dumps all the time and not doing what you need to do to help make yourself be in a good place and let your levels be balanced Mm -hmm. it's 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 a lot on you especially if you're a mama like me who's working full time and trying to take care of these babies you know on top of that our boys our two youngest are special needs Mm -hmm. you know they're battling autism Mm -hmm. and let me not call it a battle it's this is their story. You know, they mm-hmm. have autism mm-hmm. and uh, we are trying to figure out how everything works in this neurodiverse community and how we can best help them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not only let them be able to live in this world normally or as functionally as best possible, mm-hmm. but also let the world, you know, know about our boys and how amazing that they are, how amazing neurodiverse 
you know, folks are. So it's uh, something we're still learning. We're trying to embark upon that journey. Yeah, I see. Well, we have lots of stuff going on, yeah. and but it it can be hard and difficult. So um, it can make you a little sad and down having yeah. to deal with a lot of the things at one time. So shout out to the mommies who have kiddos with autism. They're yeah. amazing. They're amazing kiddos. <laughs> they're tiring, but they're amazing kiddos. <laughs> So we get to, um, we're going on five years of marriage and now we're at a place where uh, we got, you know, a little experience under our belt, a yeah, little know. bit, <laughs> and, you know, growing, growing in, in grace, yes, but we, we got some therapy uh, and I know that's almost like a buzzword today, like mm-hmm. the word toxic or uh, narcissist, like these, these common, you know, everybody's, you know, do the work, all these different things. Right. But the importance of therapy I think it helped us tremendously. Uh, I do think some people struggle with trying to find a therapist yes, or even understanding insurance and therapy, because there's a lot of people that don't know how that works. Mm-hmm. You know, and every insurance is different. yeah, every insurance is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So some people are like, I will get therapy, but it costs too much. <laughs> and then it's like, if you you got to check with your insurance company to, to see how much your deductible. Yeah, your deductible it can be pricey. Yeah, but it can be beneficial depending on who you have. Yes. Um, because I, and this is another tip too. I will say to single people, how much, if you're on a date with somebody, ask them how much are they actually investing in relationships? Are they going to say a, a, a singles conference or are they buying books? Because, you know, put your money where your mouth is, right? You talk about you want a relationship, you want to be married. Uh, did you buy Sean's course? Uh, did you buy books? Did you? Uh, hey, I'm just saying, right? <laughs> hey, let's let's be honest. Uh, and again, we're talking about therapy. Do you have a therapist? And I asked that question online the other day. Would you date someone who's not in therapy or they don't see any need for it? Mm. You know, that I think that's a, a, a question that's worth discussing as well. Because when we first got together, although I'm not against therapy, I had never had it myself before we had got together I think I did I I got robbed at a hotel once and um I needed therapy after that because I I had PTSD of course and so I think I did maybe three sessions um and during those three sessions it was the therapist was not the best it was an older you know Caucasian man and (laughs) He just, uh, he talked most of the time about himself. And so it wasn't beneficial to me going to therapy. So after that, it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth about therapy. So it was very hard to go to therapy after that. But after Sean and I got together, when he first got out here, he told me, hey, I need to go, you know, I have to get into some type of counseling because, you know, it was a big change for him. Uh, moving from everything he knows in Arizona, switching jobs, switching careers um, and coming here to Texas to be with me and to be submersed into my world. It was a big change for him and I think um he told me straight out he's like I need to find therapy and at first he said he said it for about two weeks before I actually was like okay he's serious about this let me check in with my insurance and I got online and found um a couple of different options and you know he went through a couple of therapists before he found his you know diamond in the rough I guess you could say yeah shout out to her yeah I was rocking her for like two years yeah yeah Yeah, um I don't think he's found anybody like her since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and therapy can be a challenge sometimes. And I just want to say, too, to those who are watching, don't give up on therapy just yes. because you haven't found that yes. one person. Because yes. people be like, oh, well, I've seen two therapists and that's why I don't like therapy. Mm-hmm. It's this self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't give up on eating steak because you went to a bad restaurant. You just go to another steak place because yeah. you want steak. But anyway. Yeah, I think... Uh... <sighs> you have to take that initiative to keep looking if even if the experience isn't as great with one therapist or maybe even three therapists you might have to go through five before you before you actually find what you were looking for but eventually it will um come and so he started therapy first by himself um and then when Key i got point by himself 
<laughs> no, I think that's important. You're right. I think that's important. Do you yeah. want to expound on that a little bit? Yeah, as as- um, because I was at a place where I didn't feel like I needed it. I was in superwoman mode. I was just like, no, I'm going to, you know, I have things to do. I don't really have time to go to therapy. And I felt like I didn't need it. It wasn't until when I found after I was pregnant and I realized that I might have had a potential for postpartum depression is something that worried me. And I was like, I, and I wasn't as, um, you know, you take pregnancy pictures and all this other kind of stuff. And I realized I had no desire or will or want to do those things. And I wasn't really excited. And then they took away my food because I ended up having gestational diabetes. And when you're pregnant, all you want to do is eat. And they took away my joy in life because I couldn't drink alcohol or margaritas or wine. Everything was taken from me as far as food. So I was like, this really is a terrible thing happening. So <laughs> I struggled. It's postpartum. They took away my food. <laughs> and, I, and I hadn't even hit postpartum. I was feeling depressed during the pregnancy. So because I didn't have my food. So ugh, people with gestational diabetes, I feel you, mamas. It's not fun having to check your blood sugar and take pills. And it's just not fun. Um, so it was during that that I realized I was like, okay, I needed to start some therapy too, because I felt myself shifting and getting sad and not, you know, feeling excited about life because I was like, this baby's taking everything from me, you know? And it's like, you don't want to not sound morbid or anything. It's just like, you didn't feel happy about the baby and you're a mom. So you're like, you're supposed to be happy about having a child. And so I felt guilty, you know, a lot. And so my therapist, she really helped me through that time. And I'm so glad I found her. Um, and I was lucky enough to find her on the first try. So everybody yeah. does not have that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found her on my first try of looking for a therapist. She was amazing. And I was with her for about three years before she oh, yeah, yeah. was <laughs> um, but uh, I have a new therapist now. She's also amazing. She's helping me through the stuff I'm going through now, trying to find some homeostasis, as I call it, <laughs> in my life and trying to find some balance. Um, but uh, Sean and I ended up, when my daughter ended up living with us um, and moving from Arizona um, with her mom and living out here, we realized, because we were getting health counseling for her, and it's funny, I was looking for a counselor for her, and... Um, we ended up finding someone else and the lady called me back and she was like, are you still looking for counseling? I was like, no, not for her anymore, but for us, do you do marriage counseling? And she was like, yeah. And so we ended up starting marriage counseling about two years ago. Mm-hmm. She's also amazing. Yeah. We'll have to name drop later if they let us Yeah, uh, about yeah, all of our amazing counselors. Yeah. Uh, We've been blessed in that area for the most part. We have. Like and she's saying. helped us through a lot yes. of past trauma that I realized I was bringing into our marriage. Um, one thing I will tell people is it's important to do individual counseling first. Mm-hmm. And this is our experience mm-hmm. um, because it gave us a place to where we were both open to hearing the things that we needed to fix. Cause sometimes I counselor, she gets on our bus. She was like, now Chris, yeah, you she, know, and I'm yeah, like, she was going hard. <laughs> <laughs> It is difficult to hear when you're you're not being your best and having someone call you out. And then also, I would also say getting someone who doesn't know either one of you guys. That's huge. Yeah. Because there is no bias because she's or he he or she is coming from a you know place of I don't know either one of you guys. This is my observation for what I am hearing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad it was somebody we both didn't know. We were coming with a fresh, clean slate on both ends. Mm-hmm. And she has really done amazing things on helping us communicate with each other and um, effectively communicating. Yeah, effective communication. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, very and important. Um, I <laughs> am so glad that uh, we were able to do that. So I would definitely recommend premarital counseling for sure uh doing that that's something we did not do that's something i wish that we had done um was uh, because we thought oh we know everything because we talk every day we we knew nothing yeah okay and so once we got married and we and when we started um counseling with each other it really just helped us a lot and so Mm -hmm. i would definitely recommend doing premarital counseling counseling during your marriage, but also doing individual counseling so that, you know, you're able to take some constructive criticism. Um, mm-hmm. Because when you're already working on yourself, you'll be able to really hear what your partner has to say, because, you know, they see everything. 
they're your mirror. <laughs> yes, I marriage is a mirror. Yes, they see everything, all the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, marriage is a mirror. Um, I always joke around with single people. I'm like, look, if you don't, if you don't want to look in the mirror, just stay single. Because if you get married, it's gonna be in your face. They're gonna, <laughs> your spouse is gonna be in your face. You know, and, and your and your spouse is not the ops. I know you probably no. think like, oh, yes. they, you know, they look. If you with somebody and you don't think they have your best interest, then you're probably with the wrong person. Amen. That that'll preach. <laughs> yeah. Amen, amen. <laughs> yeah, you probably with the wrong person if you feel like they're the ops. Because yeah. I know I struggled in that area, and I'm just like. Oh, I have to remind myself that she does have my best interest. Yeah. Like I have to I mean, remember that, that yeah. she has my best interest. Same thing. Yeah. And once I realized that, I'm like, okay, I, you know, all right, I know she's just trying to look out for me, even if it sucks or if it hurts. Okay. I'm just going to, okay. And I had to remind myself, you know, but, and again, that comes with therapy that comes with dealing with past traumas, stuff that yes. you like, we, we, we can be so messed up as a community, especially for the African-American community that we think the stuff that we've been through is not traumatic. We're like, mm-hmm. well, that's just, that just happened. That's just the way we grew yes, up. We do. Yeah. Nah. We have normalized trauma. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't. Yeah. And you start talking about all the stories and stuff and the things that you've been through and mm-hmm. man, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not normal. So not. get, get the trauma's not normal. Yeah. Yeah, right. Get the necessary therapy because it's going to help you one day because somebody I believe a lot of marriages could do better if you get the necessary therapy and invest, invest in in your marriage and your relationship. Yes. You know, yes, that that, that's even makeup. You invest in your marriage, invest in in, investing, looking as fine as as she does. I try. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's do that, spend that time. Man. But we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff later. But we just kind of wanted to give you an introduction. I just wanted to make sure let you all know that this is a real woman. A woman I brag about all the time. Like she's this is a real woman. I know y'all probably think I be tripping, but no, she's actually real. That's why I brought her on. In the flesh. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.